I know we both have uh, friends and, and ties in the special operations community through just sort of happenstance. And a good friend from that community uh, always says, you know, that there are only three ways to go through life at any moment, which is either back on your heels, flat footed or forward center <laughs> of mass. And I said, well, well, what's the key to forward center of mass? And he said, stress is what places you in forward center of mass, meaning leaning forward and into challenge. And I know that you've actually looked at that community and it does really seem like that's a mindset that either they have going in or that they cultivate through the course of their training. But this notion that stress is what puts us in forward motion um, is true physiologically, right? I mean, adrenaline's major mm-hmm. role is to place us into a moment of, uh, or to bias us towards action. That's why we tremble. It's it, we're the body trying to initiate action. Actually, this is probably a good opportunity. If, if there's anything interesting to extract from the study on SEAL teams, what, what was it? Yeah, no, I loved working with the SEALs. We've studied this, measured this mindset in several different populations. And in every single one that we had tested so far, the average had been on the debilitating side of the scale. So, People just saying stress is bad. Stress is bad. Yeah. With measures of growth and fixed mindsets about intelligence, people are in the middle, but oftentimes have a more positive mindsets about intelligence. That was not the case with stress. It's still not the case. I'm trying to get the message out there, except for this group of Navy SEALs. So they were actually uh, recruits, so people who were going through basic training in order to become Navy SEALs. And we found that they, on average, had uh, stress as enhancing mindset, perhaps not surprisingly, right? If you're going in to devote your whole life to <laughs> being a Navy SEAL, you must have some inclination that stress is a source of strength for you. But what we found with them, we measured this at the beginning of their basic training, of BUDS training, and then looked at how well they succeeded through that program. So as you know, this is an extremely rigorous program. At the time, it was only like 10 or 20% of um, Still is. trainees the make it The numbers have never shifted from, yeah, a, from so, about that. No, no matter how hard... Uh, pressures on the community change that the numbers are still on average about 15%. Yeah. What we found was that our measure predicted that rate. So people who even within that range had a more stresses enhancing mindset were more likely to complete training, become a SEAL. They also had faster obstacle course times and they were rated by their peers more positively. Let's break this down. People get this wrong sometimes. They think that I'm saying that a stress is enhancing mindset means you should like stress, right? Well, maybe SEALs do, but, <laughs> but that's not what we're saying, right? Having a stress is enhancing mindset doesn't mean the stressor is a good thing, right? It doesn't mean it's a good thing that you have to go into combat and it's not pretty, right? It doesn't mean that getting diagno- a cancer diagnosis is a good thing or being in abject poverty is a good thing. These are not good things. But the experience of the stress associated with that, the challenge, the adversity, that experience can lead to enhancing outcomes with respect to not just our cognition, but our health, our performance, and our well-being. So that mindset, right, how does that work, right? Well, it works through a number of different pathways. One is that it changes fundamentally what we're motivated to do. If you, you know, just imagine we're stressed about something, maybe a global pandemic, for For (laughs) example, for instance, and you think that stress is bad, then what's your motivation? First, you get worried about the stress, right? Now, not only do you have the pandemic, you're stressed about the stress of the pandemic. But second is your reaction is typically to do one of two things. It's either to freak out and do everything you can to make sure that this doesn't affect you, you know, negatively, or to check out and say, oh, it's not a big deal, I'm not gonna deal with it. I, you know, you're basically in denial. So people who have a stress and debilitating mindset, and we've shown this in our research, tend to go to one or the other of those extremes. They freak out or they check out. Why? Because if stress is bad, you need to either get rid of it and deal with it or, or it needs to not exist, right? If you have a stress is enhancing mindset, the motivation changes, right? Then the motivation is how do I utilize the stress to realize the enhancing outcomes. What can we do here, right, to learn from this experience to make us stronger, fitter, have better science and treatments for the future? 
deepen my relationships with others, improve my priorities and so forth, right? So the motivation changes, the affect around it changes. It doesn't make it easy to deal with, but what we've shown in our research is that people who have a stress is enhancing mindset have more positive affect, not necessarily less negative affect, and it potentially changes physiology. We, we have a few studies that show that people who are inspired to adopt more enhancing mindsets have more moderate cortisol response, and they have higher levels of DHEA levels in response to stress. More work needs to be done on the physiology, but I'd love your take on yeah, I, <laughs> the mechanisms you, through which that's possible. Yes, DHEA, of course, has an anabolic hormone in both men and women. Um, very interesting because we had a guest on this podcast. He's a PhD scientist who runs the UFC Performance Training Institute. His name is Duncan French. And his graduate work at uh, UConn Stores was very interesting. It was in exercise science and physiology. What he showed was that um, if you could spike the adrenaline response, I think they did this through first time skydive or something like mm. that, that testosterone went up. Mm. Now this spits in the face of everything that we're told about stress and testosterone levels, right? Um, and this has also been looked at in females with estrogen, although of course, uh, there's estrogen and testosterone, both males and females, but that's how they designed the study. So it turns out that at least in the short term, that a very stressful event can raise anabolic hormones. Yeah. And I think that people forget at a mechanistic level that adrenaline is epinephrine and epinephrine is derived, biochemically derived from the molecule dopamine. Mm. If you look at the pathway and you even just Google it and go images, you'll see that ep adrenaline is, is made from dopamine. And dopamine and these anabolic hormones have a very close, they're sort of close cousins. They work together in the pituitary and hypothalamus. So it makes sense that one could leverage stress toward growth right. um, and towards anabolism as opposed to cannibalism, which is not saying cannibalism as in eating other people, but catabol <laughs> catabolic processes is I guess the right way to refer to it. But what's again remarkable to me is that all of these brain structures that control dopamine, epinephrine, testosterone and estrogen, they're all thought to be in the subconscious, meaning mm -hmm. below our ability to flip a switch and turn them on or off. Right. And yet mindset seemed to impact them. All that to say that there's a, a clear mechanistic basis by which this could all work. So on the one hand, I'm surprised because they, these are incredible results. On the other hand, I'm not surprised because there's a physiological substrate there that could, that could readily explain them. Welcome to Brian and Paul. I am Brian and I'm really excited about understanding this stress-enhancing mindset that Navy SEALs not only bring into their butts training, why they've been able to help predict that these traits of assuming and integrating that stress can help propel us towards our goals really makes sense with that lean in forward center of mass, as Andrew Huberman mentioned. Now, I, like many of us, have a tremendous amount of respect, not only for the Navy SEALs, but the people that serve us in our armed forces. And the great thing is we don't all have to be Navy SEALs to learn the stress-enhancing mindset that will help us learn to focus more and be able to hone in on that objective and goal. I know as somebody that has had probably a stress-debilitating mindset most of my life, it hasn't always been something that is just crushing me, yet it is also something that I rarely used for a focus and enhancement as this is my avenue to understand this. We do appreciate you watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. 